Are you hurt or are you injured? That's a question we would get all the time. Are you hurt or are you injured? And really what that means is are you a pussy or are you tough? Can you take it or not? The first time you put on a helmet and the first time you put on football pads and the first time you bite into the mouthpiece and go out on a field, getting hit in the head with your helmet on, it's like a firecracker exploding in your face or in your helmet. It's not painful though. And once you learn that it's not painful, it's just jarring and, and the jarring nature can kind of be a stimulant in a lot of ways. And so that smack ends up being something that you look for. I started off coming out of college, I uh, was signed to the 49ers, traded to Denver in the 03 summertime and spent six seasons there. My NFL career was not about these like heroic moments, it was about just, you know, enduring the long season. As a football player, your whole entire self-worth is based on your ability to perform on the field, that's all. And so I was always overcoming some type of painful obstacle, whether it was my feet, my ankle, my hamstring, my lower back my shoulder, my hands. I learned really early that pain was just, just a little speed bump I had to deal with if I wanted to uh, achieve the glory that was waiting for me on a football field. This is the myth that's sold to the masses and it really intoxicates the masses. Guys, if they get hurt, their, their injury and their manhood is subject to speculation from the entire media. There's all this rhetoric uh, that surrounds the game that really enslaves the guys who play it. When you see these guys get injured, they're already hurting. I mean, the injury is just the final straw. You're coming in for treatment, and if they deem it necessary, they're handing you a bottle of pills that are supposed to help you recover. And so we just get used to eating pills. And it wasn't just painkillers. I did have a variety of injections in injuries and injections uh, the night before games into my ass of uh, a powerful anti-inflammatory called Toradol that is still administered today. Just really, really dulls your pain and makes you feel good. Do you want that hamstring to feel better tomorrow? And I said, yes. Well, this has been known in very, very small uh, number of patients to cause, you know, internal bleeding and blah, blah, blah. Do you still want it? Well, this is a doctor who is looking after me and has suggested that I come and knows what I have at stake and he has the needle in his hand. So I say, yes, of course, doc. And he shoots it in my butt cheek and puts a Scooby-Doo Band-Aid over it. And I wake up tomorrow morning and I'm ready to play a game. Trailing by three. Cutler, oh, what a catch by Jackson, but he can't hold on. Took a big shot. One of the last, uh, last games of my career, got hit in the head and the neck and got knocked out. It was in Cleveland. I didn't see the hit coming. I was diving for a ball and I got hit real hard in a very awkward angle. And after the game on the airplane, I, I couldn't move my head or neck at all. So I went to our doctor and asked him for some, some pills, some pain pills. And I was disheartened at the, at the small number of pills. I needed more. I told him, Doc, you know, I'm going to have to hit the streets for this one. And he went, <laughs> all right, Nate. And he, I don't know if he thought I was joking or what, but I stayed at home and you know, scrounged up what I could to, um, to take my mind off the pain until Monday when we went into work and went back to work. And, you know, it was like nothing ever happened. I had to deal with the neck for the next week and played that following week. And then the week after that was when I tore my hamstring off the bone and it was all over for me after that. Yeah, that was really disappointing because you know, Nate was playing very well on offense as well as, well as special teams. And, uh, yeah, so... You just hate to have it happen to a guy that's been working so hard, obviously not only for our team, but for him as well. So you chase this dream and then that bubble pops and you're out in the real world, which is very, very different than football. And you're out in the real world with a skill set that you can't use being in pain and having a propensity to medicate. You also have a bank account full of money that you can use to buy all the drugs you want. And I think that there should be some kind of um, better oversight to the substance ab abuse issues that these guys are dealing with. As of now, there's none. And there's actually clauses in the new concussion settlement that if you ha are dealing with substance abuse, then your payment significantly decreases. You don't get paid for brain trauma if you are also an addict. But I think the whole system is kind of heartbreaking, not just one story, but really what we're creating. You know, we're creating a generation of, uh, of former football players who are addicts and uh, who don't know how to get treatment.